Docker containers can add useful functionality to compute devices, especially if they have limited resources. With the PLC Next controller, you can run many types of containers to augment its functionality. Even though there are a myriad of pre-built containers out there, there are going to be times where you need to create a container with custom functionality. Let's take a look at how to use a Docker file to create a Python Flask container with custom code to display the container host name and generate a random temperature value. Of course, this code can be modified to connect to an MQTT broker, industrial devices, or whatever you need that Python can do. So let's take a look. So first of all, I have Belina Engine installed on my PLC Next controller. If you need instructions on how to do that, that video is also provided. Now to show what I've done, if I type alias, you can actually see that I have an alias for Docker to Belina Engine. Since most scripts on the internet use Docker, I prefer to use Docker so that I don't get confused and have to remember multiple longer commands. So it should be functionally the same as using Belina Engine. This is just a little shortcut. So the first thing I'm going to do now is create a couple of directories. So I'm going to run make dir dash p to create the parent directory, dash v just to confirm that those directories were created, data sim slash app, since we're going to be creating a data simulator. And then I'm just going to cd into that directory, just like so. All right, as you can see, both of these directories were created and we are in that directory. So now what I want to do is go ahead and sue to the root user. All right, I am a root user now, so I will be able to run Docker containers without any problems. And then what I'm going to do is use vim to open app.py. I'll type colon set paste so that if I paste in the code, it's sure to adhere to all of the white space requirements that I've got and I'll press enter and I. So then what I'm going to do is just paste in the provided Flask program. There we go. And as you can see, what we're doing here is setting up a Flask endpoint right here on the root. And what it's going to do is return a JSON representation of the host name. And this is the host name of the container, not of the PLC and a random temperature value. So this is great for testing things out using MQGT, whatever we need to do in the future. This is a way we can just generate some sample data. And then all I've done is just specified that we want the host to be set to our external interface. All right, and then I'm just going to colon WQ exclamation point to save. If I LS, we can see app.py is there. And then the next thing I need to do is just create a requirements.txt. That way we can specify the Flask version we want to use. And I'm going to just freeze this to 2.1.1. This is a little bit old, but that's perfectly fine in our case. And I will WQ exclamation point to save that. And now we have both of our files. So now that we have our Python files, the next step is to create a custom Docker container that's going to build a Python container that runs those files. Now we could set those up as a shared volume, but we want this to be a little more ephemeral and we want to make sure that anywhere this container goes, it has all of the code it needs without having to set up any custom volumes. So if you take a look here at the Docker file reference, you'll see there are a lot of options. I definitely recommend going through all of this if you get the chance but we're going to cover a lot of the most commonly used ones. So I'm going to CD back into that data sim directory and I'm going to vim docker file with a capital D. And just go ahead and press I to start inserting. And the first thing we're going to do is use the from directive. We're going to say from Python. This is the container that we're going to build upon. So we're going to use everything that's in the Python container and then we're just going to augment that. So what I'm going to do now is use the copy directive to copy everything in the app directory to an app directory within the container. So we'll type copy and then we'll say dot slash app since that's where it's located in reference to the Docker file. And then I'm going to copy that into app just like so. And then what I want to do is set the work directory. So you can see there's a lot of information on work directory within here. Feel free to search that, but essentially we're just going to switch to the app directory. So work there just like so, 
app. And then what we need to do is tell the container what to run. So we're going to use run here, pip install r requirements.txt, and that will install Flask for us. After that, we're going to do something that's not completely required, but definitely recommended as it serves as a documentation step so that people know when using the Docker container what ports are exposed. As you can see here, the expose instruction does not actually publish the port. It functions as a type of documentation. So what we're going to do is just let everybody know that we're exposing port 5000, which is the port that Flask is going to run on by default. Of course, this could be modified if you needed it. And then after we've done that, we need to actually tell the container what command is going to be run. So first we're going to set the entry point. And this is essentially what runs no matter what you do. And that's going to be Python. Clearly if we're running Flask, Python is required. Then what we're going to do is set a CMD or a command. So essentially this can be modified if you need to, but this is what is typically going to be run whenever the container is run and serves as a default. So if for some reason you needed to modify these, you could actually add a new command at the end of the container execution. So when you run your Docker run, you could add a new command at the end, which would replace this but the entry point would always be the same. So for some reason, this file was named something else. Obviously this is permanently in here, but if you had mounted a new file to this container, you could say docker run, et cetera, et cetera, and then end with app2.py if you wanted to, and this would get overwritten. We're not going to do that in this lesson, but of course, feel free to take a look at the documentation to see more about that or just experiment with it. So anyway, now that we've gotten this done, we have this full Docker file ready to go. Let's go ahead and build our Docker container. So I'm going to colon WQ exclamation point to save this. And then we're going to run docker build dash T to tag this with a name. And we'll call it data sim. And then I'm just going to add a period here, which specifies find the Docker file in the local directory. All right, now we're off to the races. This is going to take a little bit. Feel free to hop up, grab some coffee, and come on back whenever it's done. All right, it looks like everything is done here. As you can see, it took all of these directives as steps. So if you were to make a modification to any of those directives, it could essentially start with that one step that changes and go from there. So the ordering of these steps is actually pretty important. So now I'm going to go ahead and clear this screen and let's run this Docker container. So docker run dash dp 5000 5000. So we're going to run detached and expose these ports. And we named this container data sim. So let's go ahead and hit enter. So far, so good. If we run a Docker PS, we can see we've got our container running. Let's go ahead and curl this container and see if it works. So curl localhost 5000. And there we go. We've got the host name of the container and we've got a random value of negative six. If I hit it again, we've got negative two, just like so, doing exactly what we want it to do. And also, if we want to see it externally, we can. I'll just open another tab, 192.168.1.10, which is the IP I've set for this PLC. Add that 5,000, and there you go. So we now have an HTTP server sending out data. All right, so that's all there is for this video. If you are done with the container, feel free to do a docker rm-f. I'll just run docker ps-a-q instead of going and finding the name manually. Then I'll run a docker rmi-f docker images-q to get rid of the image. All right, so that's everything. Thanks for watching.